Hello everybody, this is your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series for the Royal Navy Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 3 Caledon class of cruisers. The Caledon class was a subclass of the C-class cruisers. Thankfully, it's not a subclass of a subclass, so we don't have to worry about that confusion. Looking at you, Weymouth. Anyway... <laughs> The Caledons really only differed from the other C-class ships in the, the change in propulsion, as well as a different superstructure system that just allowed for changes in space. But for the most part, they shared all this, the same traits. She was armed with her 6-inch guns as her primary armament, just like the other C-class cruisers were. And with the exception of Caledon herself and another ship from a different subclass, they all pretty much stayed that way throughout World War I and World War II, if they made it through to World War II. Caledon herself underwent extensive retrofits to become an anti-aircraft cruiser. In fact, she was given the dual 4-inch anti-aircraft mounts that we saw on Black Swan, and they are also the anti-aircraft batteries on the War Spite. Those would be the turrets. And she had... 12 of the 4 inch guns, so 6 mounts on board, as well as the addition of two 40 millimeter Bofors and eight 20 millimeter Orlicons. Other ships of the Caledon subclass all retain their 6 inch guns and their rather meager anti aircraft complement. In fact, in this game, it's barely worth even mentioning that it has anti aircraft capabilities. I suppose it exists, so I guess we'll talk about that when we get to the stats. Uh, Calypso, which was one of the Caledon class of ships. There's Caledon, Calypso, Cassandra, and Karadoc. Uh, Calypso, she captured a German blockade runner, the Consul Hendrik Fisch, Fisch, Fischer. <laughs> Fischer. And that's kind of her notable claim to fame. Caledon herself, she was converted to an anti-aircraft cruiser and served well into World War II. Uh, and well, three of these ships managed to survive to World War II. Cassandra was sunk by a mine in December of 1918, so she did not make it to World War II. And then Calypso was sunk by an Italian submarine just near Crete in the Mediterranean, and so she did not survive the war. While not a, a Caledon sub, uh, subclass of cruiser, the HMS Caroline is a C-class cruiser that can still be seen today in England and she was used as a training cruiser for the Royal Navy all the way up until the early 2000s. And to me, that's quite impressive. I, I love to see these ships in person. I got to see the Belfast when I was in London. Absolutely love touring these old ships. So I'd, I'd love to see a World War I era battle, you know, battleship like the Texas. I need to go see the Texas someday. But I'd love to see the Caledon someday too, just because... These old ships have so much character and history to them that even if they didn't have these extensive combat records, they were still a lot of history and character in them that make them worth going and seeing. Let's talk about the ship in game. You know, there's a, a lot of people that struggled with Caledon when the game, when they first came out, when the Royal Navy Cruisers first came out, and I can understand why. She has these torpedoes. It's the new change. You know, Tier 2 was in that really awkward position, as we talked about in the Weymouth video. But the Caledon gets these torpedoes. It also gets the first heal. So I think people get really aggressive with her. And there's nothing wrong with being aggressive. You just need to know when you can and can't be aggressive. And that's part of the that high skill ceiling, uh, high skill floor requirement for playing the Royal Navy Cruisers. It's not a, a low... If you're new to the game or you're just not good with cruisers, it's not the line that I would pick up. Even if it's your favorite line, you need to go and learn the basics on a different line because these ships will punish you if you play them wrong. And it's balanced out by the fact that she's got good maneuverability. She's got reasonably good stealth. She is reasonably quick. She accelerates insanely quick. And she has good torpedoes. They're four. There's uh, only four of them on each side. They go 6K, they're 53 knots, they're not the fastest. However, when used, you can do a lot of damage with them. And so 
that helps kind of balance the the ship out a little bit more. Whereas the Weymouth struggled because it was a gunnery only ship, and those six inch AP shells just couldn't penetrate battleships nearly as well. So this ship is far more capable of taking out battleships. But like I said, I think people get a little too aggressive because you've got that heel and you've got the torpedoes to actually, you know, engage some of those heavier armored ships, but it just requires you to be in the right position to utilize them correctly. You can't just go YOLO charging up to a battleship and expect to live from that. No, it, that's not going to work terribly well for you. Um, the gunnery is acceptable. The rate of fire is pretty good. The, the turret traverse is reasonable. It's not awful. It's certainly not something that I would, would qualify as being excellent, but it is all usable, and the ship doesn't suffer from the turret traverse problems that the Weymouth had, and that helps the ship out a lot too because you just never stop maneuvering. And like I said, if you're one of those players that can't grasp the concept of frequent rudder inputs, this is not going to be a ship for you. This isn't going to be a line for you. This ship will absolutely punish you if you sail broadside to enemies for long periods of time. It, they're just, they don't have the, the belt armor to effectively mitigate AP from other cruisers, other Royal Navy cruisers, or battleships. And I would argue that if a destroyer got close enough, it would probably citadel you as well. And so with that in mind... There's a, a specific combat engagement distance that hovers right around the 9 to 10k mark where larger ships, less maneuverable ships like the, the heavier cruisers, I don't want to say heavy cruisers, but the, the heavier cruisers that are less maneuverable, you can take advantage of those. You know, Specifically thinking of like the St. Louis, which is another tier 3 cruiser. That's particularly susceptible to this type of ship's gameplay because you are more maneuverable than it is, and you can take advantage of their lack of maneuverability to engage at further distances. However, when it comes to hitting faster and more maneuverable targets, you have to get closer, and the ideal engagement range for other like destroyers or other Royal Navy cruisers is going to be much closer. It's going to be in that torpedo range. Battleships, man, ooh. You're going to have to be ducking and weaving to really take advantage of this ship to, to try and take out a battleship. It's possible, and we do it in the the video, that the combat video for this ship, and you'll see the, the circumstances surrounding that. But let's go ahead and let's talk about the ship's stats. The ship has 19,000 hit points and 76 millimeters of armor at the most, which is the belt armor. The main battery consists of five 6-inch guns with a max range of 11.8 kilometers. It does have torpedoes. Like I said, they are four per side. They are in double turrets. They're in the dual torpedo tubes. They have a 6-kilometer max range, 53 knot top speed. The ship does have anti-aircraft. However, it's really not worth talking about it. The most impressive one is probably the 40-millimeter guns. The rest of these have really rather lackluster DPS. In terms of maneuverability, the ship does go 29 knots. It has a 530 meter turning circle and a 5.6 second rudder shift time. The ship has the turning radius of a destroyer, but it has a more cruiser-like rudder shift. That kind of plays out really weird, but the interesting part is this ship gains speed very quickly, and you can use that to your advantage when you know turning and maneuvering against other ships. Concealment, 9.8 kilometer detection range by sea and 4.9 by air. Very good concealment for a cruiser. This allows you to really close the distances on enemy ships before you start engaging them to really maximize the amount of damage that you can do. And let's go ahead and talk about modules. You know, the tier three modules are basically the same as we've seen before in the past. Main armament mod one will be a staple. Damage Control Systems Mod 1, I've thrown that on here. A good case can be made for Propulsion Mod 1. I think that that's probably a better choice. I'm playing around with both. Mostly because when you do get hit, it seems like your propulsion system gets taken out. That said, you know, there's no wrong answer between these two. 
Steering gears mod, I can live with a, a broken rudder. I'll just move back and forth to throw off shots or change speed. That that still helps so long as I have a working engine to to use. But those are those are the two modules that I'd recommend. Like I said, you can run either one of these two and you'd be okay. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the battle video. So in this battle, it's going to be a tier three fight, a tier two, tier three fight. And there's a number of other cruisers to shoot at, but as you can see, there's a heavy complement of battleships, in particular, the new German battleships, the Nassau. And the Nassau has very little superstructure to actually actively engage and do damage with. So that makes it very, very difficult to engage those ships in a stand-up gunfight, which is why the torpedoes become a pretty important ordeal. Thankfully, the dispersion on the Nassau isn't so great that you can actually close the distance, and if you've got a significant amount of hit points, it's the only ship left on your side, you can YOLO charge them, and so long as you're good with your rudder shift, you can take advantage of them. Now, normally on this map, I like to hang around B at the start to try and take out some of the destroyers that go there. However, we'll see as the map the match begins, the enemy ships don't really go to B, and our team completely ignores it for a, quite a long time. So we're going to head that way, at least on the outset, and then once I realize everybody's basically ignoring me, well, that's when we'll go ahead and, and go to A, is where we end up spending most of the fight. Now, the one big key to this ship is going to be that rudder. You've really got to abuse it in order to take advantage of this ship in the long run because you have to dodge shots to survive the fight and it's not easy to get in that mode where you just constantly are using your rudder. What you'll see once I get into an engagement, it's very rare for me to not use my rudder and, and be constantly using it while I'm engaging ships. And you can see just how well it, it mitigates damage. You're still going to take some damage, especially from other Royal Navy cruisers with the ridiculous pen angles of the of the, the guns. Here you can see we're launching torpedoes. This is really a long shot, no pun intended, that they would be this far into the B cap, but you never know. Some days you never know. And the torpedoes reload quick enough, you know, right around that 33 second mark that using them up, eh, who cares? We're at the low tiers, nobody cares. And I'm not going to hit anybody. That's the important part. <laughs> you also see I use the single launch torpedoes, which is the unique part of this line. The single launch torpedoes just allow you to stack those torpedoes way tighter than they ever would be trying to launch a narrow strike, a narrow spread torpedo launch. It just doesn't work out that well for me to use that. I really enjoy having those single launch torpedoes. It's extremely powerful, extremely useful tool. And if you're going to hit a ship and you launch them real tight, you're either going to hit them with all or with none of them. Or you can make it so you have really large spreads as well. All right, we're going to go ahead and start engaging this other Caledon. He's mildly distracted by our dirt ski, but you can see here that we're going to start racking up damage. And you can see just how soft this ship is. In fact, with a little less lead, this Caledon would have most likely gotten deleted much earlier in the game. That's all right, though. We continue to maneuver. You can see there we managed to dodge all but one shell, and the one shell that did hit, it bounced. So we're going to keep our rate of fire up. You can see the turrets. They have a really good angle at the back. Their, their approaching angle is not nearly as good. So much like the Weymouth before this, its gunplay really favors that kiting style of gameplay. So you'll see that a lot in this. You'll see me start doing the assault and return, assault, return. Another Citadel. And you can see, you know, we're up to 10k damage, just shy of 10k damage, and well, there goes the first Caledon. This leaves us with all of their battleships, it seems like. Oh, Weymouth, thank goodness. There's another Nassau. So they're all, they've got three Nassau's down here, which is just insane. Now this Weymouth, he's he's moving in a straight line. Yep, still don't recommend that. You'll see that, uh, well, we're going to have a lot of rudder shift input here. 
Now we're rudder shifting over to the other way. And we're going to be rudder shifting the other way. I mean, it's just... This is the kind of combat maneuvering that is standard. There's just not a, an opportunity to not. If you don't keep maneuvering, one of those battleships is going to get an AP salvo off on you, and it's going to be a bad day. So here we are. We're going to continue to engage this uh, Weymouth here, who is kind of YOLO charging into this mess. He's got camo on, so I know he's not uh, completely new to the game. You can see he lands a, a reasonably healthy salvo on me. We still got plenty of heals. Well, since he's going out of range and presenting a really bad profile, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, we'll take our, we'll take our shots at the Nassau, even though the shells aren't doing a whole lot of damage. We're also launching those torpedoes. You can see I gave a pretty wide spread just to try and cover as much area as possible. Uh, I probably could have launched them all at the marker and done a pretty good job of, of landing all these torpedo hits, but I only end up getting the one. That's okay. We don't need to land them all, we just need to keep the, the damage rolling. And you can see, 707 damage. Yeah, we're not going to win this firefight. You wouldn't win this fight one-on-one -on -one without torpedo hits. So you can see he doesn't do any real maneuvering at all, and... Torpedo hit. So he dies. And... I think I end up rubbing up against him. Yep. So now that we're, all we've got left over here is, you know... Two of the two more Nassau's and probably uh, another ship. Oh, there's a destroyer now. Go ahead and get our turrets traversed up. See if we can't rub up against another Nassau. It's getting kind of tight in our our maneuvering over here. That is one nice thing: the ship does lose and gain speed very quickly. So you can you can make these turns where you cut all of your speed and just take advantage of that. I'm extremely fortunate that. One of their battleships didn't decide it was time to shoot at the this Nassau that's next to me. The Chester is a ship that if you guys are attempting to Citadel, don't count on it. Find softer targets, even if they're broadside to you. You just don't have the gun oomph to get through to that, uh, that Citadel on them. They're pretty well-armored ships. Couple of parting salvos at that Weymouth before he leaves. Not a huge amount of damage. You know, we're up to 27,000 right now, which is, you know, we're not doing too bad. Again, look at the, the rudder shift and just how much maneuvering we're actually doing. 3K, though, to that, that poor Chester. I think he quite understood what was happening there. And as you can see, we've once again got ourselves some some ships over here that we can engage. We're going to go ahead and launch some more torpedoes, either to dissuade them or to keep them all out altogether. And we are going to shoot at this Weymouth that is backing up, and maybe we can get some lucky hits in on him. I don't think we really do. No. All right, what about the Campbelltown? Are we going to get a torpedo hit on him? I don't know. We're gonna keep uh, <laughs> we're gonna keep running circles and maneuvering, and we'll just keep shooting at stuff. Uh, once again, you can see there there is absolutely no stopping of, of maneuvering. It is a constant thing, and the guns they traverse fast enough that it's not a big deal to you know do a circle and take advantage of that. Once ships all that heat comes off of you, you can. You can go on and, and start working, you know, some other ships as well and, and slow down at some. But, you know, for the most part, yeah, no, you, you really need to keep maneuvering. Well, okay. We got an Asal that is uh, turning. So we'll go ahead and launch some more torpedoes. We're going to prepare ourselves for this Weymouth up here and maybe we can take him out. We'll see. And the Balon profile is, is a really strong profile for these ships. It's very narrow. And if you angle yourself just right, you can kick the rudder just a little bit. And most of the shells will miss. Now, he, you know, he took off 1,200 damage. Not a bad, not a bad salvo from him. Don't think we're going to get ourselves any on this, this Nassau, but we'll go ahead and we'll launch another salvo. And we're going to, again, turn away from this fight as much as possible. 
My goal here is not to continue to get into this fight and keep pushing because as a Royal Navy cruiser, I don't have enough hit points to actually do that. We'll go ahead and rotate out, get those other guns brought to the other side. This also brings our other set of torpedo tubes back into play. But nope, we're going to traverse. We're going to go ahead and back out almost entirely from this fight. We're not going to completely back out. I just, I want some other ships to take some punishment because I can't. We got some torpedoes headed back over there to that Weymouth. Man, I wish they'd get there. But nope, they run out before they do. And that's what I was talking about with the torpedoes. They're all kind of hit or miss whether or not they all hit or not. Almost have this Nassau dead, but as you'll see, we're not going to be doing exactly world-shattering numbers to him. <laughs> In fact, all of those shells are breaking, so... Now that these other ships are finally coming up, we will go ahead and we will start pushing again. We'll get more aggressive. Our team has captured B, which is good. We, we needed B. We're ahead in points. We've taken out a number of their ships, which is good. This Weymouth is starting to charge in. Not something I would recommend, but, uh, you know, hey. I'm, it's just not a ship. If it had torpedoes, it would be a, a good ship to do that with, but it lacks those torpedoes, so it's really not a, it's not a good ship for charging. As I said in that video, it's a really good ship for that kiting. 859 hit points? Really? Or sorry, 899? Now 29? Come on. Alright, well. He's dead. At least I got the kill for it. Now it's time to take out this Nassau. We're going to launch torpedoes. And you'll see I'm launching them in a pretty wide spread here. I'm anticipating he's going to turn out and away. We're going to go ahead and traverse to the other side. We're going to present that bow on profile. And I'm going to angle myself. And when I go at him, I'm going to angle myself out the other way so that I can dodge a little bit easier. You can see we got pretty good charge torps going. Hit him with the torpedo. That's good. Let's get these other torpedoes out. <clears throat> At this point, my engine is dead, so if he turns and those miss, man, am I screwed. But thankfully, he turns too late and doesn't get enough salvos off to kill me. And you can see he took a huge chunk of my hit points out. Like I said, these ships just aren't durable enough. And he was shooting HE. He wasn't even shooting AP. Had he been shooting AP, I might not be having this conversation with this battle. But thankfully, he complied. And now the rest of this battle is mostly us just trying to get back into the fight. And, well, it doesn't happen. So, anyway, the the, the Kaladon, it's, it's a fun ship to play. And the grind is short, so if you get real frustrated, just hang in there. You, you'll be fine. Don't get so frustrated that you give up on the line, because the line does get really, really good. I'm at the the Leander now, from what I've played through so far on live, and it it, it, it performs very well. And, and truth be told, even the Emerald, when we get there, you know, I don't have a whole lot of bad things to say about it. There are some frustrating things that I have to say about it, but nothing that really damns the whole ship to being, you know, just this painful grind. It's not super painful to grind through. I, I think the Royal Navy Cruiser line is one of those lines that once you figure it out, it, it becomes very easy to do well in them. And they're actually quite enjoyable to play in that regard. It may not be the best ship ever produced or best cruiser ever produced but they are pretty solid ships we are shooting at a st louis over a mountain you know eh, i don't even know how close those are really getting to him we're gonna do a zoom in shot here with this next full salvo and the salvo of three and see just how close we're getting but he's moving away and i can see that on the mini map so any of these shots are really you know we're being hopeful <laughs> and he gets killed yeah and I would have just barely missed. So, but uh, anyway, the you know the Caledon itself is per is pretty solid ship, and the Royal Navy cruiser line do get better as they go on, and that they they get better in the ways that are kind of frustrating. If you're if you're frustrated now, they do improve. They do get slightly more durable. They they can bow tank just a little bit better. 
I, you know, I don't recommend them for that role, but I suppose if, if you really needed to, I, you know, it's possible to do that. Now, the Caledon's average damage on the server is 18,000, and we're up at 53.5, so that's a, that's a very good game. That's over twice the server average, which is exactly where I want to be with these ships for these videos. I, I do really enjoy the ship. It's not perfect, but it, it has strengths that aren't um, that 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 aren't out sh shown by the deficiencies in the ship being the being durability. Nine hundred five base XP, fifty uh, fifty three. No, there there was a lot of damage there. I had fifty three something. <laughs> All right, so you guys know the drill. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and thank you guys for watching.